snow is a water source. This was a very, very interesting topic uh, around the table because there is almost no science on this and the people are so divided on this issue. Uh, anyone that was at the talk earlier uh, listening to our great uh, nutritionist from Otter Co-op, Ken Wilkinson, he stressed over and over again how important water is to horses. But there are many horses that are simply left to fend for themselves, for example, in northern BC and northern Saskatchewan. And people think this is all right because a fair number of those horses actually survive the winter. This became a, a real problem because there's almost no science on this. And we know that horses drink about 25 liters on average of water a day. Well, if you do the simple math with snow, that means a horse would have to eat 250 liters of snow in a day. If a horse ate snow all day long, he, there's no way he could meet that water requirement, uh, simply from a standpoint of a time budget, but certainly from a, an energy budget, there would be no way either. So we, we know that horses that are relying on snow are not drinking enough water. And when uh, we were challenged by the science committee, uh, because they said, you know, there really is no good science on this. It's because nobody would allow you to run an experiment on water deprivation on horses because it would be judged to be cruel. So <laughs> it's a little bit of a catch-22. So we ended up um, having to uh, simply go back to sort of common sense and what we know about horses. I mean, the things you have to consider that a horse will suffer from if it is deprived of water and is required to eat snow is dehydration, weight loss, just discomfort from, the, from thirst, and a much higher risk of impaction colics. And the other thing that, the, the other great flaw in the argument of the snow-only system is how do you control the weather? Uh, uh, any of you that have ever, ever lived uh, near Calgary will understand how you can get a Chinook blowing through and suddenly this loose, fluffy snow that the horses were relying on is covered by three inches of ice. So the horses can't move around and they certainly can't access any reasonable quantity of snow. So where we, where we ended up was that horses must have access to safe, palatable and clean water in quantities to maintain health and vigor. And there are people that are going to manage with snow-only systems if they're using things like high moisture forages, like haylage, for example. If your horse is in an area where he has a lot of access to green browse underneath snow, he might be able to manage. But we, we really have come to the conclusion that hay plus snow is completely inadequate. And we will see how that is going to stand the, 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 the scrutiny of the lawyers and the judges. But what we think happens to horses uh, uh, that are living uh, on a snow-only system is that they're essentially surviving and they're basically waiting for the weather to improve enough that they can go back to eating normally and return to a normal hydration status. Uh, horses are capable of starvation for reasonably long periods, um, relying just on coal and water, but uh, that must be quite a miserable thing for them to endure. And just what other, other areas of, of uh, regulation with, in terms of requirements is that in extreme, water con uh, extreme weather conditions, you must pay special attention to water availability, and that applies both hot and cold conditions. <laughs>